Gabe Lefkowitz started playing violin at the age of four. The son of an orchestral violinist and grandson of a musicologist, the now 31-year-old has carried the family trait from youth symphonies in Boston to Juilliard, Studio 8H, Carnegie Hall, and now the Louisville Orchestra, where he currently serves as concertmaster. And at the end of February, he'll lead an evening of Italian music as both soloist and conductor. I sat down with Lefkowitz to discuss his career, his unique side gig, and what keeps him going. It didn't take Lefkowitz long to find the big stage. At 16, he was asked to perform at the 2004 Democratic National Convention in Boston. On just three days' notice, he prepared a solo rendition of Amazing Grace to open the first convention since September 11th. You know, I was 16, I was fearless. I don't know that I could do that now. I mean, the, let alone the millions watching on TV, there's probably like 50,000 people. I'm not sure how many uh, the, the stadium um, seats, but some, something in that um, arena of uh, audience size. And yeah, I just prepared this kind of harmonized solo violin version of Amazing Grace. It went by super quickly. I got out there. I played and all I saw was, you know, just like a bunch of, um, well, it was dark in the arena um, and I think people were holding up candles that mm -hmm. had been passed around. Um, yeah, it was a really uh, poignant moment for me. Lefkowitz soon went off to study music at Columbia University and Juilliard, and while working in New York after receiving his master's, he landed a pretty great gig. Once again, Vampire Weekend. You performed on Saturday Night Live yeah. with Vampire Weekend. Yeah. How did that come about? So Vampire Weekend, those guys went to Columbia, actually, and I believe some of them were music majors. Um, so I hadn't met them because they were a year or two older than me, um, but a cellist who um, is a good friend of mine played both um, at Columbia and at Juilliard, um, as I did. And he had several classes with those guys from Vampire Weekend. They turned to him uh, for, you know, to, to do some of their uh, instrumental arrangements and to like get a quartet for them whenever they were playing a live show. And I was super fortunate that this guy, that this, this cellist asked me to play as part of a quartet with him once, I think at, um, I want to say it was Bowery Ballroom, uh, which is a pretty sweet uh, New York venue. So that was um, really awesome. And then shortly after that, they did a uh, February 2010 appearance on SNL. And so I got asked again if I would come in and be part of a quartet. But yeah, it was awesome. You know, I got to hang out and, uh, and see how that show is run. It's so fascinating. It was one of the highlights of my you know, life and career, uh, for sure. Lefkowitz went on to join the Knoxville Symphony as concertmaster at 23. And while there, he began to nurture another childhood dream on the side. But my dad was also, you know, part of being in the Boston Symphony as being in the Boston Pops. And it was already after John Williams' time that I was going, but they would do these, like, movie nights where they would play these um, you know, excerpts of movie music with montages of the film in the background, and that just totally affected me emotionally, and I saw how um, into it audiences were also, and I was like, man, I want to do this. I want to be part of this. So he did. Since 2013, Lefkowitz has been composing music for video games. His most recent project is a game called Pop-Up Dungeon. That's, that's the project I've been kind of the most involved with. I've written I would say almost an hour's worth of original music for that. And you start at the piano with a, a pencil and paper, sketching out ideas, and then I put it into a computer program, um, Logic, and do a you know, kind of mock-up to get a sense in MIDI what it will sound like. You get approval from directors or developers um, that they like it and that, they want, you know, that they'll um, support your recording it live. And then there's a whole process of um, you know, hiring musicians to um, 
track things kind of like one instrument at a time. Because if, you, if you're at the top of the field, obviously, you have a budget to record an entire right. orchestra, but that, I mean, it's astronomically expensive. So I play as many of the string parts as I can um, personally, and then I layer them all together. Um, then I bring in brass and wind players, and the rest is actually um, computer samples. So it's like this hybrid mix, and uh, yeah, that's how the sausage is made. Consuming much of his time these days are the preparations for the Louisville Orchestra's Evening in Italy, a concert series which he designed and will lead as both soloist and conductor. Yeah, it's uh, this program came about in an interesting way. Um, Teddy asked me uh, if I would like to lead a program, um, and we threw some ideas around, like, Basically, I knew I wanted to both lead this um, program as an instrumentalist and a conductor. And so thinking of, okay, what are the perfect kind of violin solo pieces that I can play and lead at the same time? Um, but immediately I thought of Vivaldi's Four Seasons, and since it's winter time, or will still technically be winter by that time, so Vivaldi's Winter seemed like a perfect piece, and so that informed um, the theme for the rest of the program that a night of Italian music would be awesome. If someone's not a, a normal concert goer for the orchestra, what can they expect from that night? Some of those pieces yeah. are well known, even if they don't realize off the bat. Oh, this is, I mean, if, you've, if you're not um, used to coming to a concert hall, this is the perfect one to come to. It's a bunch of short-ish pieces. The whole program will, you know, these programs are done without intermission, so it's like an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Um, yeah, a lot of beloved classics that you, some of them you'll recognize from cartoons. Um, Vivaldi Winter is an absolute masterpiece and it will be appropriate for the time of year. Um, a dazzling showpiece, the Paganini. Um, the Respighi work, which is a little bit more off the beaten path, but it's really cool and it's, it's um, comprises four um, short movements. Um, that are just gems, and uh, and, a, and a great Verdi prelude, and then uh, a uh, hopefully a uh, exciting uh, smash finale with the dance of the hours. It's, it just gets faster and faster at the end, and uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a great evening of music for sure. You are a busy, busy guy. Between your role with the orchestra, your your side gig doing composition mm -hmm. for video games, yeah. How do you keep your creativity? going? Where do you find the drive to do all these things? You know, it's not hard to be inspired. I'm surrounded by great musicians. Teddy's a super inspiring leader to work for. And uh, I mean, he's the ultimate guy who just fills his days with musical activity. And he's constantly working and thinking. And uh, yeah, when you're in a good environment, and um, it's not hard to, uh, to stay inspired and, and have goals. The trick actually, um, especially in, in life as a musician, kind of forging your own career path is not to look on social media and see what everyone else is doing and feel like, oh, I should really be doing that or why, why am I not doing it at this level? You just, you got to do your own thing. You got to find the things that you're passionate about, make you happy and do those things. Um, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not anyone else. The Louisville Orchestra's Evening in Italy concerts will take place February 28th through March 2nd at three different venues around town. My thanks to Gabe for hosting us at his home studio. For information on those concerts and to see more of my conversation with Gabe, including his impressions of the SNL after party and how he came to own a 150-year-old fiddle, check out our web extras at whas11.com.